I don't hear anybody on my friend's post. Hello? Hello? Oh, hi. Hey. Uh, it's so nice to actually see you guys. And I want to, my name is David Upton for sure from Comic Good Solutions. 
And I wanted to start off by apologizing for not making last month's meeting. I was in the back roads behind Canning and I took a bolt in my tire and I was coming back from the city. So I had like a sports jacket on. My truck is 10 years old. The spare tire had never been off the bottom of it. Yeah. Not You wouldn't have wanted to talk to me then, to be honest. Anyway, <laughs> my apologies. Um, I, I know that you guys have a busy schedule. I'm, I was hoping to maybe take up 10 minutes of your time. Just give a, I know you guys have seen the, uh, or I understand that you guys have seen the statistics from the survey. Uh, I wanted to just kind of show you a couple of slides and talk about what I think might be the options. And then you guys could give some feedback and through Aaron, I can help to craft that into a final report that I get to you guys by the end of next week, if that seemed reasonable. Unless anybody has any questions or concerns before we get started. I promise not to be more than five or seven minutes. Okay, I'll take that as a, you're good to go. Can I share my screen? Okay, let's try that. Nope, that's not what I want. Are you guys uh, seeing the screen? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, now I just got to make it be there. <clears throat> so, so the survey, the survey that we did, and Aaron deserves a, a pile of credit for this, had 105 responses. That's like about an 8% response rate given the population. That's a really, really good response. There, what was unusual and fascinating to me was that the response rate was spread fairly evenly across age uh, uh, demographics. So like, you know, we had a, a everything from 45, uh, uh, or rather from a, uh, uh, 20% from the 25 to 35 year olds to 18% at 65 year olds of, of the respondents. So that was that was a really good, a really good response. Um, it seems clear from the responses that there's there's a general feeling that something is going to need to be done. And I think that people are really thinking ahead of themselves like this. And the worry from the seniors mostly, it seemed to be, but the businesses moving up to the highway and their inability sometimes to access reliable transportation. When we met with uh, this, one of your subcommittees, um, it was really interesting to me to find out that a lot of the retail workers live in Truro and come back and forth to work. That struck me as a possible opportunity. The other two main points, I think. I want to connect to my phone. Oh, sorry. Mm -hmm. The other two concerns. Now connected to Bill R's iPhone, too. The other two concerns seem to be that uh, there was no access to banking or ATM services in town and that people had to go to Shuby to the oh, drugstore okay. or to the bank. Disconnect from my phone. And uh, the other concern was that occasionally they have to go to medical appointments in Pearl. Now, we were able to find out that uh, Nova Scotia Health will pay for some of those that travel expenses. So, so as I see it, there are three, well, four options. One, don't do anything. It's, you know, one of the options for sure. But the first option is that the town of Studiac and business owners could sort of set up a community taxi service. It could be a nonprofit. There's a lot of ways we could build it or it could be built. The challenges that you'd have until the grocery store moves up the hill, until, until sort of things settle over the next couple of years, it would probably be marginal at best financially. Somebody would have to, it would have to be subsidized in some way. And it would for sure not solve all the problems that people have identified, but it's certainly an option uh, to get going. The second option was to partner with uh, Colchester Transportation and base a vehicle in Stuyak, and then use it to run local drives, you know, local errands or trips to Shubenacadie or Truro. There'd almost certainly have to be some cost sharing because it probably in the short term would not be cost effective. The town, if it was in studio, would probably have to have a secure place to store the vehicle. Um, you guys would have to have a conversation with Colchester Transportation to figure out how it could pay for itself. And it also wouldn't serve, solve what seemed to be a transportation challenge for workers coming from Truro uh, to Stuyak and then returning. So, so although it would be better than option one, probably not a full solution. 
So the third option, and the one that I think is in the long run probably the most reasonable, is that sort of a, a temporary working committee gets set up of the business owners in Stuyak who feel as though they might need staff brought in uh, back and forth from Truro and from Colchester Transportation to spend a quick time to gather the data to see how many regular users it would be on a daily basis. And then the bus could start from Truro in the morning, bring workers in, and then be here for the day to use either transportation up at uh, 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 back and forth to the stores on the other side of the highway, or uh, be used to maybe one or two days a week going to Shubenacadie, or one day a week into Truro. There's lots of ways you could sort of build in services so that people who struggle with access to regular transportation could be served. Um, it's possible that uh, Colchester Transportation could access some funding for some of that work, and that uh, it would relieve the town of Stoyak of having to support this the the hosting of a vehicle in the community, which would bring costs. So, so those are just you know some of the some of the most likely scenarios, and and these things don't have to be done in three weeks or a month. They have to be sort of planned for over the next year or eighteen months, so that. You, we, you gradually build up to the right solution. Uh, my last slide, uh, and I think this is this is. I mean, I looked at the data and I looked at uh, your town plan and how uh, population had been dropping off until 2016, and then bumped up again. And so, I suspect, and this is, I could not find data. To be honest, I could not find data to support my position. But it's my belief that because I live in a pretty rural place. Actually, we go into Stuya to shop. If I lived, you know, relative to where I'm living now, um, we go into Canning to shop, which is about the same thing. So the advantages that Stuya have that are going to, I think, pay dividends over the next five or ten years for sure, are geography. You guys are geographically located. You're you're not, from Shuby towards Halifax is all considered to be pretty much a bedroom community. You guys live in that in between space where it's still, still rural and still close to all the access to services that people might want. Relatively speaking, cost of housing is less. The uptake on remote workers, and I can tell you with our business, um, after six years in a 4,000 square foot office space, we are closing the office in March because our staff have all moved out into the country. Well, all but two. Uh, so we have staff living everywhere. And they're using technology to do their work. So one of the things that's true is a big selling quality these days on communities is that quality of life is perceived to be much higher in small towns and rural communities like Stuyak than it is in bigger centers or even bedroom communities. So there's no reason to believe that as a result of COVID and technology and all these things I've mentioned, that um, Stuyak's population is not going to continue to grow. If it is going to continue to grow, one of the factors that people are going to used to determine whether or not they want to live there is what the perception is for quality of life for, for folks. And transportation is one of those things that people consider. So those are the, this, I, I know I'm doing this really quickly, but I was kind of warned that you guys have a lot to talk about. I would be more than pleased to answer any questions. Uh, I believe that Aaron has shared the information from the survey. So you have a lot of the data. Um, in my report, I will have uh, put some more math around the options. I'll have uh, included some quotes from Sue from Colchester Transportation, and we'll be able to, you guys will be able to sort of make a more fulsome decision. I must tell you, though, that uh, we've done most of the rural transportation, probably 80% of the rural transportation sort of plans around the province over the last five or six or seven years. And uh, um, it's, well, unprecedented to have a community start to plan. You guys are actually ahead of the game. You're planning about two years ahead of the real problem or the real challenge that you have. And uh, that's a, 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 I mean, a commendable thing. That's not the norm. Usually we're trying to help people put out a fire. So uh, uh, good on you, just for that at least. Um, does anybody have any questions or comments or can I do anything to add clarity to my quick conversation? Um, if, I, if I can ask, um, the um, when you come back with your report, it would include what CTCL might cost? 
or some different options that they might be able to provide? I'm, I'm going to uh, uh, enlist Aaron's support and, and, and she and Sue and I are going to have, uh, uh, I'm going to write up some pieces. I'm going to send it to Sue, the woman, mm -hmm. the ED from Colchester Transportation. We're going to have a conversation and give her an opportunity to come back with some options. But right now there's new federal money in place that wasn't even available when we first started the work. It's come out since. So there's there's opportunities here, some of which are just emerging. But I, I think I think you guys are are early enough into the process to, you know, maybe take advantage of some of those opportunities that seem to be coming out. Thank you. Any other questions or comments, Tess? Okay, thank you very much for the presentation. That's my pleasure. And Aaron, thank you for all the work also. Yeah, Aaron, Aaron has done a terrific job on this uh, and uh, uh, been very helpful, I, I have to admit. And uh, well, listen, thank you for your time. I appreciate the fact that you guys have a couple more hours to go before you're done. And uh, I think I'm going to go grab a cup of tea and a cookie. <laughs> have a nice evening thank you very much then next on the agenda is the YMCA Nova Scotia Forks. are they on your family Valerie's on there Valerie Daniel yep hello good evening Valerie hey how is everyone good so yeah, uh, I'm Valerie Manuel. I'm with the YMCA Nova Scotia Works uh, Employment Center here in Middle Muscadabba. Just a little office like, uh, that's located uh, right across from the post office and of course our old bank that we no longer have. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's where my office is. And uh, just want to chat to you a little bit about what who what my role is and what we do here at the uh, at the YMCA Nova Scotia Works. Uh, so yeah, again, I'm Valerie Manuel. I'm, I do have some notes here, so I'm kind of cheating a little bit. <laughs> uh, I'm the case manager here, actually. So, uh, you know, people come to me, uh, you know, regarding job search. They might need assistance with uh, EI applications. They want might want to talk about skills development, uh, self-employment, all the uh, stuff that could be available for someone that has the right eligibility for it, for sure. So in 2022, I reached out uh, to my supervisor because uh, we were talking about outreach and, you know, keeping our numbers up. Everything's about numbers, right? Uh, so and just we chatted about about uh, who's coming to the office here in Muscadabba. And we did chat about uh, that we do have uh, a fair amount of people from Stuyak that comes to Muscadabba for those services. Uh, could be seasonal for EIs. It could be for job search, um, stuff like that. So um, so what we did is uh, we chatted about Stuyak possibly, you know, maybe the library down there. So I took my upon myself with my supervisor's permission to uh, reach out to uh, Denise Shepard at the library uh, to see if there was any chance that we could possibly use some room there at the library for outreach, you know, for me to present myself to the incoming people. Um, so we did that and it was in 2022, at some point that's when COVID and everything else was kind of in between and things were going on. So up in there every Friday, I, well, most Fridays um, in the, in the, at the, uh, the library in Stuyak. So, so we did that. And um, during that time, just recently, I guess we, I chatted to Erin, I met her and she's a great, great gal, hard worker, <laughs> I can tell. Um, very sweet and discuss the idea of us using the town hall as well upstairs, uh, I guess, where you guys are at tonight. So um, she said, yeah, sure. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch up Fridays, like tomorrow I'm at the library next week. I'm actually on vacation, but the following week I'll be at the town hall again. Um, I have some pamphlets and stuff about what we do here at the job search center. So, so anyway, um, what I want to do is um, talk about what we can do for people in the Stuyak area and what we do here in Middle Muscadab, it would be the same. 
So what we do is we chat about our services at the library. If someone comes in and, you know, it's advertised, of course, on Facebook. I have my, my little poster up there, employment services, every Friday at the library. So if anybody wants to reach out to me, they can. They can make an appointment and we chat about uh, what they're what they're looking for, of course. So, and if they want to get, say, a resume done, I just send them an, uh, a link to their email to get that intake started, and go from there. Depending on what their services they want, if they just want a resume, cover letter, or nothing else, that's fine. You know, we can close that intake out to self serve. So, if they want something more specific, like uh, a three month, four month uh, job search, we can put them into a return to work action plan with very little effort. It's just meeting them maybe a couple times and getting them to that return to work. And then we'll make them interventions uh, in an appropriate way, which they which would help them the best. Um, so we offer a variety of services to the public. So it's job, <laughs> uh, which includes workshops, which can be done one on one via Zoom or Teams. Um, so we talk about job searching online, resume writing, cover letters, just to name a few of them. Oh, we're not also, defeating him. Pardon me. You have a two forty right now. Uh -oh. You're either fat or chunky. Just uh, one minute, Valerie. We're having uh, an issue with your someone not muted. Aaron, you muted? Yeah. Okay, we're good to go, Valerie. Thank you. We're good. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, we also, you know, we also have a great team that works with me and I'm just going to explain their services quickly as well. So one is the job developer, employer engagement specialist. And right now it's Kathy Dillman Smith and she works with one-on-one -on -one people to assist people with their job search. So I bring their information in, I determine where they should go, where, who should help them. And uh, so Kathy, she is a job developer uh, slash employer engagement specialist. So she also works with employers. Uh, so she helps a job search. Uh, she meets with employers if they need uh, a job posted on our Nova Scotia Works uh, website. Um, she also talks to them about funding, possibly the START program. And you can find all that stuff on Employment Nova Scotia website. And that's a, a benefit for employers uh, to take advantage of that for uh, funding, to help with funding, stuff like that. So she can help with that stuff. Um, we have an employment support practitioner. Uh, she helps individuals with more barriers, such as transportation, maybe disability. Um, someone that struggles a little bit harder to find some work. And we also have a career counselor. And his services are for people that are wanting maybe a career change and maybe, you know, they, they want to get some assessments done to see if they are in the right spot at this time, at this time of their life to, uh, to go ahead with that training, that specific training they're looking for. And uh, that could be funding through the skills development program as well. And uh, if the individual qualifies, of course. So other than that, that's kind of a little quick blurb. blurb. Now, uh, if you have any questions, uh, definitely reach out to me. And uh, I just, I just found Stuart very supportive uh, with me being there. And I just, to thank you all for that. So yeah, if there's any questions, feel free to, uh, to uh, ask me or, and I'm gonna give you guys my email address. Um, is there a spot here I can put it in my chat? Yes, there is. I'm gonna put my email address in that chat if anybody wants to uh, write it down. And they can email me at any time, or I'll put my phone number as well, and you can contact me. Um, so, if you have any uh, questions, I was just wondering, uh, like, I don't really know how to say it, but like, I've been going through some issues lately, and I don't know what to do. Down. Down. So I'm not sure if that question was for me or if that was a question or if it was something that <laughs> I'm not sure. I think if someone just wasn't muted, I'm not sure, Valerie, but anybody around the table, any questions for counselors or uh, for Valerie? 
thank you for doing so much for our residents okay. and for reaching it's out. My pleasure. Yes. Yeah, it's my pleasure. I really appreciate. I really, I truly enjoy what I do. I still remember the first client that I had that uh, walked out here with a lot more self esteem and a better paying job and hope. They had hope. So yeah, I see all kinds of different uh, scenarios, and some of them are pretty sad, but uh, a lot of them are like, "Wow, this is good." So thank you so much. Thank you, tonight. Can we just delete that? Like interference. I'm looking for some new software. Yeah. I think I just trolls. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I have no idea how that happens, but yeah, I think we can. Oh, I can hit She's on, still on. Do you want to just leave her on there? Well, she might want to stay. Okay. Yeah, she might want to stay. Gary, do you want to stay on? Sorry about that. Yeah, I'd love to stay on for 8.30 at least. Uh, I do have to go pick someone up at the airport, but yes, I'll be here for a while. Thanks. Again, thank you. Welcome. Great presentation. Thank you, Mary. Thank you. Thank you, Seven. Uh, we have over a petition for the correspondence. Okay, maybe leave that screen off. That way you can see if anybody pops on. You can use them right away. Okay, sorry. We're going to 9A, and that's the tax sale update. I think Kevin? Yes, I'm going to make an item. Yeah, so th this has been circulated by manager finance, just uh, as a requirement of the municipal government act. Uh, the town of Harvard Ethics shall prepare the list of properties meeting criteria for tax sale. Uh, it's reported from council prior to the commencement of the formal process. Uh, so, that, and we're required to give you the list of the properties uh, that we are there. And uh, there are immediately preceding this one, there was one or two people who came in and made satisfactory arrangement for payment in accordance with your policy. So we did not include those on the list because they made an advance of circulating this memo. So in respect to that, the arrangement, we didn't publish it for this. And since this did come out, we have since received uh, a payment arrangement for the Decker property, the first one on the list. So that will be coming off the list as long as they uh, continue to fulfill their responsibilities under the arrangement. And uh, there's been an inquiry from one or two others. So we're hoping to get this list pared down fairly quickly, which is uh, a positive sign. Um, and so that, as again, this is for information because once there are three years and they're over the minimum amount set in the policy, it is mandatory that we proceed with. If we were coming with ones that were less than three years, you would have counseled the ability to defer up until three years, but we don't have any in that category we wish to bring forward at this time. Well, I, I just have a very quick one. So what happens if they don't, um, if the others don't get back to them, I guess. We, we continue on with the processes okay. laid out in the NGA and, and okay. in the policy, which is there's a set period of notices and there has to be so many days given them. Then you're allowed to do your title search, which in the fees of the title search go on to the account. And then you give another notice if you want, well, when the sale is going to be, I uh, think it's a 60 day notice at that point, et cetera, et cetera. And then you follow it right up until the time of. The same. And when we get closer, there'll be a recommendation whether to do it 
option or tender. So we can come forward to manage your bed. Okay. Thank you, sir. 9B, loan well, guarantee, Stuyak, fire department. So the email was included in the original package. But, okay. And on the extra one page I have here for it tonight. Uh, so the fire department is purchasing a new rescue vehicle. Uh, they were, they placed the order and have uh, paid for the chassis. It's sort of, not the exact process you would like to see. And I think that's, I think some, maybe some issue communication with the prior CAOs and all the change over. I really, it should really come to council before the order and commitment is placed because uh, if you were to turn it down, what would be their recourse to be able to buy it? The money's not in the bank or at least to cancel a contract, et cetera. So, uh, so. We're going to, we'll have some discussions with the fire department to get that cleaned up going forward to make sure that when they plan to, once they're planning to buy to come forward with this before they place the order. In the past, it did. This didn't happen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so they so with the, the cost, uh, they still hope to do some more fundraising to have more funds available at the time when they make final payment. But uh, to bring it down below the 700,000, what we're putting in place over there at the 700,000 being the maximum for now. So the motion, the motion is there under the recommendation we'd be looking for tonight. And if the motion passes tonight, we will bring back a formal resolution that it has to be in a specific form uh, prepared by municipal affairs that then you pass resolution and it's sent back to the minister's approval. Uh, it doesn't have a direct financial impact on the town. Also, uh, certainly when we go to negotiate loan terms for ourselves, of course, we have to disclose that we've guaranteed these loans for the party. So if we were negotiating with our banker or with municipal finance, municipal finance would be aware because it's approved by the minister of our banker wouldn't necessarily be. So we would have, once it's approved, we would, as a courtesy, call our own banker and say, we did this. Um, so the, and under the fire department doesn't have the capacity currently to borrow on their own without the town support. So this is the process we go through and it's under, uh, municipal government act, subsection 2946. Uh, that, and there's not much effect on staff work, but we're just getting some paperwork done, which take me half an hour, an hour we'll get done. Uh, so your options are limited as the trucks aren't even ordered. <laughs> uh, and we'll move on getting that process formalized with the fire department. So uh, the uh, motions are under recommendation uh, if council or the committee hall wishes to consider that this evening. I'll make that motion that uh, council recommend that the council recommend to uh, that we recommend to council uh, that we uh, enter into an agreement in principle to guarantee a loan for the Stuyak and District Volunteer Fire Department in the amount not to exceed $700,000 for the purpose of acquiring a new rescue truck. Motion made by Councilor Osborne. Second, please. Second, the Deputy Mayor Chapman. Discussion on the motion? First question. Question is McCall. All in favor? Second. Opposed? So moved. Uh, just to uh, committee met with the chosen recruiter on Tuesday afternoon. It's an initial meeting, get acquainted, uh, you know, fill in uh, them with the job description, the job description, the bylaw, uh, some of the history of the position, the amount of people been in position in recent years. Uh, some just general discussion. They're uh, going back and will be getting us formal contract documents back. They requested some other pieces of information, which I was even a source from them, such as the Association of Administrators to the Salary Service published one in 2020 for its members. 
So we've shared that with them conditionally only use it for our search because we can't authorize them to use it for anyone else unless they contact that municipal unit the year we move in. Uh, so that they have comparative information of at least what the salaries and benefits were then for similar sized communities. Uh, and so we're hopefully we'll get some other documents falling back and forth uh, the next couple of days, and then they will uh, commence the search process. Uh, they will uh, be back in touch with us to, uh, for authorization. They'll make suggestions of what media to advertise in, and they will also use their own existing database of people who have uh, responded to similar ads for them, and just people they know through their contacts. And they will they will they also will actively head on that end of the app if they feel they know they can find some good candidates elsewhere who may be looking. So there it is not just relying on people submitting an application, they'll be actively encouraging people to uh, consider the opportunity. So that that's where we stand so far. Just it's the very initial uh, stage of some improvement. Yeah, that's pretty good there. Uh, uh, anything else there? Just they will be, um, re you know, requesting council and staff's input as well. So, oh, yeah, it'll be stakeholder. So, we can, uh, coming a couple of weeks, you can probably expect a contact from them asking to have an interview with each of you uh, for your input, and they'll, they'll be doing the same with uh. Probably, probably the three senior managers as well here to get their input on what they feel a good candidate looks like when they take all that into account when they do the detailed searching. Any questions? Budget preparation dates. Yeah, um, I just want to, I guess I just had a couple of questions just um, about the next dates and if we know if they're like how many and are they still going to be on Wednesday? Because I know we got an email when we didn't, when we didn't have a couple that it would come to council for discussion, but it, but it didn't. So I'm just wondering. Okay, uh, yeah. Okay. So yeah, the main middle one was center saying someone was the I think the plan line was just one was canceled. We moved it to the next Wednesday until council was satisfied and her committee was ready to recommend the council passing of a budget and set tax rates. So once, uh, if we don't get, so what we would do, so, you know, Tuesday, late Tuesday, we feel we don't have enough new information for those unknown items. So we mentioned, say, last night, we might say, okay, is it, we won't bring in unnecessarily if we don't think we have enough information. You know, we got some more. I know she's uh, been working on a couple of the items today and got the actual amount of what the one cent means, et cetera. That'll be ready. But just there's a couple of things we're waiting for on, on public works and just a couple other things we're going to try to finalize. And then that'll come back uh, with some options. And then you'll be able to decide whether you want if you're ready to proceed to set the rate or whether you want to wait for further information or you want to debate, come up with other options. So, I mean, that's, it is, it's your process. So it's how fast or how uh, long a process you want to have or if you're, how long it takes to come to consensus, I guess. So they just don't so want to We're still planning on the Wednesdays yeah. unless, unless you let us know that we can't make a quorum or something the earlier we know. The better. So right now we're planning for uh, next Wednesday. So if any of you know that you can't make it, please let us know as soon as possible and see where the where the numbers fall. And I thought later the twenty eighth. I can't before the audit or the uh, mm -hmm. so I sent it early. So if any of us February twenty eighth. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Madison. Yeah. Okay. Council Nine E hiring committee up uh, mandate. Yes, Mine too. Um, I, I just wanted some clarification regarding the, because I'm hearing sometimes it's referred back to as the HR committee. Um, and I don't know if we 
of the HR committee. So I'm just looking for some clarification on exactly what the mandate is for the hiring committee this time around. Well, that was discussed in an in-camera meeting that that uh, under consensus that we would carry on doing what we had done previously with um, hiring. And uh, at some point years ago, it was the hiring committee or the HR committee, you know, and it really didn't have a, a set name to it. We just knew what we were talking about. So hiring committee meant HR committee and HR committee meant hiring committee. So. Oh, okay, so I am confused because my, like, so, so there is no mandate, like, I mean, what exactly is it? I mean, I, I don't understand. I, I really don't because there's, it, it seems to be different than what it was before. So I oh, just, really? well, that's why I'm asking for clarification. Oh, okay. No, that's fine. No, 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 no. I'm just, I, that surprised me that all. Um, no, we're just, um, we're the, the hiring committee that we've been doing it basically the same way as we did it before. We have a headhunter and following all the steps that is laid out ahead of us, like interviewing staff and council and whatnot. So it doesn't deal with HR issues of staff. Well, we did meet with, with previous CAOs. Yeah, that's yes. why I'm asking. But, but not other staff. It's no, that's right. Not other staff, just the CAO. Okay. And so met with the other CAOs for what purpose? Like, do you chair the committee? No. Oh. Okay. We, we don't, I don't think we've been chair. And I'm sure I missed this. Oh, oh yeah. okay. Okay. That's why. Yeah, it, if I can add, I think what's, what we have done is when we have hired a CAO, because of the six-month probationary period, we continue to meet with them to make sure they got, you know, indoctrinated to the job or answer any questions or anything we could. Over the years, we also have done the performance review and our duties were... Mm -hmm. But I think it was maybe back in April, um, we were, um, I think there was a motion for us to hire a CAO. So, and. Yes, yeah. So. And, and that was just the motion, was just to hire a CAO. Correct? Well, the recruitment process yeah. for CAO. Okay. And so we tried to continue once the CAO was hired. Um, to work with him to, you know, ensure a successful start. Unfortunately, he left. And I believe in some of our meetings, I think we felt we had the um, support to continue on with the next round of hiring. Okay. So, Councillor Kramer, can I ask, did this kind of morph from the old CAO review committee that we used to have? I don't know if it morphed. I guess we've been asked to do that um, at the last uh, review that we did with the previous CAO prior to Mr. Brown. Yeah. I think it was clear from council that they wanted to be more involved in the writing of the review. There oh. hasn't been a review since. Oh, okay. 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 And I, I'm not chairman, but I'm going to be sure that there was consensus. To, to move forward and leave from yeah. council. Is that my understanding? Mm -hmm. For the recruitment process. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. I, I guess my my confusion came in to play when I heard it called the HR committee numerous times. And um and I guess I that's why I asked the question like is it regarding other staff? Like what is the close <laughs> So that's all. I um, just want some clarification on it. So, do we need a motion? I don't think so. Or are we on past that stage? Oh, no, I don't think so. I just needed some clarification, some clarification. on okay. what exactly the committee was doing. I mean, we all agree for recruitment, absolutely. And we passed a motion for the RFP for the recruiter. So, I don't think we need another one. Good to clarify, fellas. Yeah. No final policy, so I can come see you down there. Also, 
We're going to go to citizen comments. Aaron, if you would like to. I'm sorry, Mr. Richard, I should be saying that. Would you look at that? What is it that you what what's some what is it that you'd like to know? You can go unmute all if you want. If you the three dots, there is a ask all to unmute and they can unmute if they choose to. Okay. And then the comments are more. But I think that's just the I think that's the email. email. Oh, yeah. okay. So everybody should have the ability to unmute at this point if they want. Mm -hmm. So if you're attending by Zoom and you wish to make a comment, you can unmute. Make those comments, please. Hearing none, we'll move on to uh, reports to council. The first would be myself, in brief. Uh, attended uh, by Zoom, a housing crisis conference in Halifax, January 29th. Uh, February the 1st, attended the business towards committee meeting, uh, chaired by Councilor Prim. Great committee meeting, actually. Uh, February 1st, Mr. Madison and I met with the Toronto and Cold Fish Chamber of Commerce. February the 6th, uh, initial meeting of the hiring committee with uh, Fawcett Recruitment, which is the division of Royer Thompson. Um, February the 7th, I uh, chaired a budget discussion um, meeting. Weekly briefings with Mr. Thompson take place every Wednesday, unless there's a storm day or whatever may trouble in there. I used to work for Thompson. <laughs> <laughs> I want to say thank you to the uh, Public Works Department for doing a stellar job in this last film. It was, it was a mess. They were, they were waking me up and going by my home at uh, four, to four in the morning. They did a quick response, and there's always issues that get missed, but uh, kudos to, to the uh, Public Works. And uh, as you may, may have seen today, congratulations to Jill Rakus, who was the successful applicant for, I'll get this right, the position of Administrative uh, Executive Assistant and Finance Assistant. And I do not have a day of fire. I didn't bring it down. We're starting, we're starting Monday. Monday. So, <laughs> congratulations to Jill. I know some people have passed it on already. I trust she's going to do a solid job. So, I'll start from my left with Deputy Mayor Chapman, please. Uh, I did a couple of budget meetings, budget subject, budget <laughs> discussion <laughs> meetings, and a couple of fire committee meetings. Um, I got nothing. Thanks, Just a reminder of the public participation meeting on Saturday um, at the community center from two to four. Um, hopefully, uh, lots of residents get out to uh, provide us with comments and uh, any concerns they may have regarding the planning documents and strategy for the town. Okay. Mm -hmm. Also, <laughs> um, I also just wanted to thank uh, Public Works. Um, that's a lot of snow. You did have to work for them. Oh, I did, but <laughs> can I say <laughs> part of my fitness program? Yeah. Um, I attended the seniors' uh, music and social at Lights Point Church last week, and there was over thirty people there. It was great. It was really, really well done. Um, I met with the uh, CAO hiring team with a recruiter. And I also, uh, myself and um, the town resident, uh, Mark Laughlin, who is also on Business and Tourism, uh, we've been invited to join the steering committee for the um, strategic planning for the marketing level. So um, we are at a meeting on um, uh, Wednesday for that. So um, the levy is hopefully going to start to be collected the 1st of April. The strategic planning process will probably take at least a year. So that'll be a lot of time to let the marketing levy money build up. So um, it's, it's getting off to a start. So that's a good thing. Go ahead. Thank you. We have no in-camera session. We have a notice of motion and reconsideration. And with that, Seven thirty eight. What does Bill have to say? Could you read that to Aaron? Chat. So I'll hold the adjournment and bring it back. Hold back in council.
Yeah. 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 Yeah.